Okay, so I'm playing highest rated player I've played so far. Play a Sicilian. Play a, a different line. I want to play a dragon, if he lets me. Please don't play Rosalima. Oh, he plays Rosalima. I have to blame Fabiano for this, for popularizing the Rosalima. I think I'll play e6, which is not a move that was played at all in the World Championship match, but it's the only move I've studied in this line. Now I'll play knight d4. Knight d4 is an interesting move. It violates some opening principle if I move the same piece twice, but I'm trying to attack stuff. And one of the points with knight d4 is that this line is not supposed to be good for white because of the move queen g5. And this is a fork. And I believe white's just losing a pawn. Yeah, I've had this before, but it's been a while. It's not too many people play exactly this line and fall into it. Uh, but I think it's still going to be playable for white. You just take the pawn. Maybe white gets some compensation. Joanna tries with a raid. Thanks, Joanna. Shout out to Joanna streaming earlier. Streaming crazy house earlier. It's been a lot of crazy house lately. Okay, I think I'll take the pawn. Because what else to do? And now the knight is tied down to the rook, so white has no time to take this pawn. And meanwhile, I'm just up two pawns. This looks like a great position. <laughs> the bishop is on d3, which blocks a pawn, which blocks a bishop. Okay, so c3. The first thing that comes to mind is bishop c5, because f2 looks really juicy. You get bishop c5, takes, takes. The knight can't take because it's still tied down. Meanwhile, f2 could be a problem. And if bishop c5, rook takes here, I take here, and I'm threatening f2 again. Let's do it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there is a better way to play this for white. But I forget how. Puerto Rico. Don't recall ever seeing a viewer from Puerto Rico. Welcome to the stream. Yeah, it's very possible knight g3 was better at some point. Okay, b4, interesting move. Taking the bishop. I mean, I want to take here, but it loses a piece. So let's move back. White's going to play c4. Hmm. Hmm. I have to do it. Yeah, the one sort of good thing for white about this position, even though white's down two pawns, is that it, it's a bit chaotic. And there are ways for white to come back and get compensation. Like even here, I have two things to worry about. My g7 pawn and the threat of c5 winning d4. So do I defend? I mean, queen e5 defends both things, but it looks way too greedy. Play d6. Give away g7. I kind of like the move knight e7. Knight e7, if rook takes g7, I have knight like e6, or knight to g6, trapping the rook. And if knight e7, c5, bishop here, the knight still can't take because the rook is hanging. So let's do it. And I'm developing. Okay, so c5, have to do this. And there might be some goal like very soon, of uh, playing knight g6 to h4 to f3. If this were crazy house, I would love to just drop a knight on f3 right away, but 
Okay, have to be patient, have to follow the rules. So the pawns attacked twice. I can play e5. Blocks a bishop though. So what about this? Takes and then knight f4. Attacking and attacking. Let's do it. As I don't see how white's going to cope with knight f4, it looks looks difficult because the bishop's undefended and the knight is tied down. So I think this is a monster threat. Not to mention I still have ideas of this knight h4 maneuver. Also knight e5. I can't draw arrows. I want to draw arrows because this is so thumbnail worthy. Like there's so many knight moves to attack like squares and pieces and deflect white's pieces from defending other white pieces. Yeah, this is some pretty thumbnail worthy. One more arrow. Bishop takes d4 is probably a blunder. Okay, so queen c2 actually looks reasonable. Wants to queenside castle. But then I went f2. Just keep winning more pawns. Yeah, the problem is that the king kind of slips away. Looking at knight e5, queenside castling, and then queen h3, but then there's rook g3. Well, maybe now it's time for e5? You could also play knight f4, queenside castling, and take on e2. And then take on f2. And I keep initiative because I attack e2. I think I'll do that. It's greedy, but... It wins a pawn. I can still decide if I want to take on d3 too, or take on f2 first. Hmm. This feels very greedy. But the bishop's attacked. Oh, bishop e5 coming. Let's do it. I'm up three pawns. I have not lost a single pawn yet. I have two connected passers. But white has three half-open files on the king's side. Yeah, the more pawns you lose, the more files you gain. Queen d3. Figure out about that move. I mean, my queen should not be getting trapped. So I always have queen h4. So I guess bishop e5, defending both pawns. I mean, odds are white's probably going to win a pawn back. Like rook df1, queen h4, bishop takes d4. How bad is that? That could be pretty bad, actually. I could play queen h2, though. And the queen's tied down to defending the bishop. Queen h2? And if rook h1, I have queen g3. I mean, the problem for me currently, I have none of these pieces in the game. And white has basically all of the pieces in the game. So I would like to play b6 at some point, get some initiative, develop my bishop, harass the white king. But it could take some time. Okay, here I would like to queen trade. This is the only move. I mean, rook f3 might be coming. Queen g6. The 
Queen g5. Choices, choices. Queen g5 could be slightly better. You go play queen g5. You have more options. Defends the bishop. So after bishop takes d4, I might not even take. Like, I might go for b6 right away. To watch out for time. Could take and then go for b6. Ah, but there's rook g1 ideas. That's actually kind of scary. So what do I do? I might be p being punished for my greed. Takes, takes. E5, maybe? Queen d6, queen e7? Maybe go for f6. Takes, takes, f6. Doesn't look right, though. This looks very shaky. Maybe d6? Takes and then like bishop d7? That's really wrong. I don't know what to do here. There's some tactic to take and play queen g2, being extra greedy. I might do that, because I don't see what else to do. Queen g2? Is that, if it forces rook e1, that would be a great sign. Just looks so wrong. I mean, I'm so low on time, though, I have to do something. I have nothing developed except my queen. And it's on g2. It's about to get trapped somehow, probably. Well, I'm up three pawns. I have to expect rook e1, maybe b6. I mean, I have to do something to come back and develop. I, mean, I would much rather be white in this position, I think. But the bishop's tied down. Like, white is a little bit stuck. The bishop's tied down to the rook, and this rook is tied down to the bishop. And for the time being, things are defended. So rook f2 is logical. I could take first. Maybe I'll take first. I'd be happy with a queen trade. Then I'll probably... Mike just slipped. Let's put it like this. Hopefully that's better. I'll probably put the queen on g5. Queen g5. Or queen g3, maybe. Queen g3. Pinning the rook to the rook. I just have to move quickly. I want to play queen a3. I've disobeyed so many principles in the opening. I have moved, moved my queen pretty much like half of the game so far. Neglect.
collecting, developing my pieces, and just going after pawns. But maybe it's paying off. Queen a3 check. And rook b8 coming. Who's going to mate who first? Rook b8. YOLO. I just want to play rook b1 and mate him before he mates me. Rook b1 should be a threat. I always have f6 too to try and defend. Maybe. Bishop c4, wow. So rook b1. Gotta move much quicker. Rook b1, we trade. I have bishop a6 and we trade more. I mean, I'd be happy with trading. I'm very happy with trading. I can still legally castle. You can legally castle after move 30, right? There's no rule against that. I have 50 seconds left. Ooh, I'm threatening to win another pawn. A2. I feel like Yasser. Just grabbing pawns all over the place. Ooh, I should pre-move that. Okay, now castling, and my king is safe. Ooh, free pawn. <laughs> Next move, I'll castle. I'm up four pawns? No, I can't count. I'm only up three pawns. That's a lot of pawns. He wants to mate me. Let's play... Am I losing this? Oh no. I forgot about that move. I have to play... I guess that. I'm giving back a pawn. It hurts, but it's necessary. At least I have queen f7. I have 28 seconds. There's no increment. So... I can't gain time. If queen stay on the board, maybe I can mate him more quickly. I want to play f5. If queen d6, probably f5. If we trade, then I put the rook on a8 and start pushing. Okay, so we trade. Yeah, rooks belong behind pass pawns. He's going to play rook a6 and just blockade. But this is where the two connected passers come into play. So I'll push these pawns. Uh, let's start with that. Maybe I'll give up the a pawn. Hmm. What's going on here? Did I push too far? Or did he... The rook can't come back. But it, maybe it's a race, but I'm winning the race. And it's a sub from the ultimate edge. Thanks for the sub. Yeah, 19 seconds should be enough to win this. It's such a weird game. Yeah, I think rook takes d7 was a blunder. He should have played like rook a1. Rook a1, maybe even white's better, because he can win the h-pawn. Okay, so now I have to use some technique. Let's try and attack the d-pawn. Move the king to the center. Another sub. Don't distract me, though. Okay. Now it's going to be time to start winning pawns. I think rook takes e4 may have been, maybe would be a mistake, because king d3. But now it should be easy win. Yeah, it's probably possible to win this without wasting another second. Yeah, the goal is not to get below 11 seconds. Oh, that would have been stalemate if I had played king f4 and he played king h3. Okay, let's not stalemate him.
check. Okay, I used a bit too much time, but I still have enough time. Okay. I did it. Yes. Okay. That was a difficult game. But I, I was up material pretty much the whole game. I won a pawn and then another pawn and then another pawn. At some point, I feel like white should have been much better. Like around here, I was feeling very bad. But somehow queen g2 kind of worked. It's such a greedy move. But if rookie one is forced, then it was worth it. Will I take the f pawn again? I mean, it was tasty at the time. If I would take it again, I don't know. It depends how hungry I would be. But I'm pretty full after this game. Queen g3 was a useful move, too. Yeah, it would be interesting to see like how many queen moves I played in like the first 25 moves. And maybe like 30 to 40%. Okay, good game. Back to tournament. If people want to use Stockfish to analyze that, uh, feel free. 